What's up YouTube, yo gang, welcome back to the channel. Are y'all hungry? Good, cause today we're making meatloaf. And this is what you're gonna need. Come on over. All right, you're gonna need dark brown sugar. This is for your glaze, some ketchup, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, some powdered bouillon. It can be cube or powder, doesn't matter. Some Worcestershire sauce, breadcrumbs, seasoned or not seasoned, preferably seasoned, some milk, some adobo, some white vinegar, yes, for our glaze, um, an egg for about every pound of meat that you're doing. Yes, I'm making a lot of meatloaf because the good thing about this recipe is you can actually fix it and freeze it and save it for next time. But, so right here I have three pounds of ground beef, I have two pounds of ground pork, and I have one pound of Italian sausage. I was looking for spicy, I couldn't find spicy, but that's fine, Italian sausage. So if you wanna remember that, just three, two, one. You're gonna need a green pepper, bell pepper, sweet pepper, whatever you wanna call it, red pepper, an onion, a shallot, and a whole clove of garlic. It might seem like a lot, but it's not, because you're just gonna throw everything into one bowl, mix it up, and throw it right into the oven. So with that being said, let's prep, don't go far. What I like to do is, if you look right here, we have our shallot, we have our sweet pepper, green, our green pepper, red pepper, onion, and garlic. They're chopped very, very finely. Make sure you chop your vegetables very nice and small so that they're not chunky and lumpy in your um, meatloaf. Now, what I like to do, I like to sweat my vegetables down. Yes. I also sweat the vegetables in my potato salad. If you have not tried it, don't knock it until you try it. A Little bit of olive oil. Give that a second to catch up. And I am just gonna cook these down until the onions are a little translucent. So while this is working, we'll go ahead and start combining our meat and mixture. Our olive oil is hot, so I'm just gonna dump everything into this frying pan. Let this cook down. You don't have to rush it. Give yourself some time to incorporate all of your seasonings and stuff. So really don't rush this part of the process. So just make sure everything has a good mix to it so that when you leave it, everything cooks evenly. You see how fine those vegetables are? Now, you don't have to, but preferably that's how you would want it to be so that it's not chunky. Now, if you don't have time to chop this up as fine as this, just throw it in the food processor, in the chopper, something to um, get that process sped up for you. Okay, we're gonna let this go. And we're gonna start combining our meat. Okay, I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. Give me one second. Okay, so I'm ready. We're gonna add our three pounds of ground beef, our two pounds of ground pork, and our one pound of Italian sausage. mixed in here. Now, just try to spread it around just a little bit before you start to add your seasonings so everything is incorporated. I am gonna go in and I am going to mix it with my hands, but just to get that kind of mixed up there like that. Okay. Now, I apologize, this is a large quantity, so I'm going to eyeball all, a lot of these seasonings. Season your meats to your tasting and to your liking. So with that being said, we're gonna go in with some salt first. 
This is a lot of meat. Some fresh pepper. Okay, it should have been our beef bouillon. Now this beef bouillon also has, um, is salty, so you just want to make sure that you gauge this properly. So this is about, that's one cap, and we're gonna go in with a half. So one and a half capfuls. Some garlic powder. Some onion powder. Some cayenne pepper. Because I didn't find the spicy sausage, we are gonna use a little bit of cayenne pepper, just for a little kick. You don't have to, but you can. And some paprika. And a half of your Some Worcestershire sauce. And I like to judge my eggs by let's say by the pound of the meat that I have. So I have three, five, six pounds of meat in here. So I'm gonna use five eggs because I am going to put a little bit of milk. Milk, why milk, yo? Just trust the process. Okay, that's one egg. Two. When we add this last egg, we're gonna check on our veggies. That's my hand. Because we're gonna need our veggies for that. Okay, this looks perfect and smells amazing. So I'm gonna turn this off. I just wanted them to sweat down just a little bit. See that? Beautiful. Okay. So, whole milk. Whole milk, skim milk, whatever kind of milk you want. Now I do see people, they mix, or they soak their bread, their sliced bread in the milk just for, I guess, um, to soften it just a little bit and that is their binding agent, but I like to just add my milk and um, use dry breadcrumbs. Honestly, I've never tried it that way. I shouldn't knock it. I don't know how it is, but I've never tried it that way. I can't get this well Okay. Now this is the fun part. My hands are wet. Where y'all watching from? Let me know, drop that down in that comment. Okay, so now I am just going to gradually just combine all of this goodness in here. And before I get too, too far, I'm gonna add my vegetables. Okay, you wanna combine everything together. Make sure your sausage, your ground beef, everything is nicely mixed in. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to get my pan and incorporate my veggies. Get rid of this. And get my pan. This pan is heavy. And you're just going to drop that in there like that. You could have let it cool. We don't have time for that right now. We're ready to eat. This is not hard enough to start any type of cooking process or anything. mix that in. I wish I can smell this already. You want to have a decent amount of fat in your meat and your combinations of meat. Um, this is why I use some pork, some beef. If you don't want to use pork, you don't eat pork, Fine, use chicken, use venison, use, you know, just something to balance that out. Okay. Finish doing that with my hands to make sure everything is nicely combined. All right, she's very moist. So at this point, you wanna add your breadcrumbs. just to make sure that it binds well. We are using complete seasoning bahia breadcrumbs. Again, you can use whatever type of breadcrumbs you like. And you'll be able to tell with the consistency of the meat, whether it's too wet and you have to add just a little bit more breadcrumbs to bring that to a nice manageable loaf. See, even though it's soft, I can still maneuver it and make it into a ball. So that would be the consistency that you're looking for. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, I hear a lot of people, don't over massage it, don't overdo, don't, don't. What does it really do? I mean, you're incorporating your seasonings and stuff. Tell me what happens if you so-called over um, work your meat for your meatloaf. Drop it in the comment. Would really love to know what happens. All right, simple as that. Simple as that. So let me get my pan so we can get ready to put this in the pan and into the oven. So don't go far. All right, so our mixture is all nicely combined. In, and I'm just going to load our pan. You don't need to really grease the pans. This has enough fat in it to where it will not stick. If you choose to, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to use a loaf pan. You use what you have. It's not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just going to get a nice scoop of this meat and just lay it into my loaf pan. Try to make it as even as possible so that it's uniform and not all lumpy and funny looking when you um, take it out of the oven. Like so. So that is how that 
should look. Doesn't that look good already? See when I say about finely chopping your vegetables, how nice that looks? Just make it pretty. I eat with my eyes. If it don't look good, to me it ain't gonna taste good. So it gotta look good in order for it to taste good. So you, you just don't lie to your subscribers? What are you talking about? How you eat with your eyes? Yes. If it looks good, I'm automatically gonna assume that it tastes good and I'm gonna wanna try it. So you don't eat with your mouth? Yeah, of course. <laughs> See? So don't be lying. simple. Don't be simple. Don't be simple. Okay. Another nice handful. Just push that down in there. And any leftovers, remember you can pack it into a Ziploc bag and put that in the freezer. And whenever you're ready to have this meal again, pull it out, let it sit, and do not run it under any hot or cold water. Just be patient, let it sit, and it will defrost. Don't worry. Add a little bit more. This one's a lot deeper than that pan. Oh, I cannot wait. So our oven is preheated at 375. We are going to leave it for 45, 50 minutes. Now, it can give or take. depending on, again, how deep your bowl is, how thick your meatloaf is, to what your time is. So we are gonna watch these two, as you can see, they're two totally different shapes. Well, as far as depth goes, they're different. All right, so get rid of this. I'm gonna clean this up because I don't want no ugliness around my edges. All right, and we're gonna put it in the oven. I'm gonna use a cookie sheet to catch any drippings that may run over. I should have done it with my mac and cheese, and I didn't, and I had to clean that up. So, we'll set that on there like that. Let me open the oven. You're going to put it into the oven. And we'll catch it later in about 45, 50 minutes, okay? So when we come back, we're gonna make the sauce and clean up, well, let's clean up first and then we'll make the sauce. Got it. Now for the glaze, what you're gonna need is some dark brown sugar, some cayenne pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, just a little bit of cinnamon, some white vinegar, ketchup, salt and pepper. Yo, that combination is a little weird, but trust the process. We are gonna go in with a cup, a nicely packed cup of brown sugar. Okay, a cup of brown sugar. We're also going to need one cup of ketchup. Make sure we shake this up. You could, if you don't want to use vinegar, you could use um, mustard. That's fine, it's your choice. cup of ketchup. Get all that ketchup out. You 
one and a half capfuls of white vinegar. That's one and just a little bit. Some cayenne pepper. So it's gonna be a sweet, spicy, tangy glaze. You can judge the amount of heat that you want with the amount of cayenne pepper that you use. All right, we're gonna have some garlic powder. Onion powder. Just a little hint of cinnamon. That's gonna take it to another level. Some salt. And pepper. We're gonna combine this. And voila, there is your glaze. Just that simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this, the meatloaf go for at least the first 30, 35 minutes. We're gonna let this sit and we're gonna glaze the meatloaf with it and then put it back into the oven for the remainder of the cook time. Okay, so when we come back, we will be glazing. Okay, so I've been notified that it has been, I let it go a little longer because like I told you, one of the pans was a lot thicker than the other one. So I let it go for 55 minutes. We're gonna take this out, we're gonna glaze it, and we're gonna put it back on broil for 15 minutes so that we can get that nice caramelization on that. So let's go to the oven and pull that out. Where y'all watching from? Let me know. Ooh, look at that. See all that extra fat and juicy yumminess? Why well, I said you really didn't have to grease your pan? Because it was going to yield a lot of fat. And that right there, you're not gonna keep any of that. But that is what keeps, well this one got real heavy what's gonna keep your meat very moist. Let's put this on here. Let me close it. Now you can choose to do one of two things. You can take your loaves out, put it into another dish, glaze it, and then put it back into the oven without the excess grease and stuff that's on here. Or you can leave it, glaze it, put it back into the oven and just don't even worry about this. There's nothing to worry about this. It's not gonna make or break anything. It's, it's fine just as it is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just glaze this as is and put it back into the oven. Let me grab a spoon real quick. It's not a big deal. And you can put as much or as little of this glaze as you want on your meatloaf. You just want to get a nice caramelization on it. Well, you got to be using all these big words. Oh, because you like it. You like it. Caramelization, that ain't even no <laughs> word. Caramelization, you know, yes it is. It. That ain't even no <laughs> That ain't even no word. You're just hungry, you aggravated now. Put a little bit more here so I can spread it out nice and even.
Mm, 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 mm. Boy, this is gonna be so good. Just like that. It's not rocket science, it's just cooking. Let's put a little bit more on this side over here. Because this is what's going to elevate this meal to a whole nother level. Now, you can pair this with whatever you want. I'm going to give you all the proteins. Y'all tell me what you would have paired it with or what you would eat it with. And that's how that should look. We are gonna put this back into the oven on broil, high broil, for 15 minutes. You know what I pair it with? What? Beef meal. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, but I didn't think you was gonna say it. I knew it, but I did not think you was gonna say it. Okay. Let me open the oven. Let me move my rack up one so it can be a lot closer. All right. Let's whoa. Take this back. Now I done messed up. Now, mind you, this slides out, and I'm just making this harder for myself. All right. Royal, 550 for 15 minutes, start. When we come back, we are actually, when we come back, we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. You go on it to rest. You don't wanna cut into it, you know, as soon as it comes out of the oven. But once it's rested, we will be back and we're gonna be ready to eat. So, oh, sorry. Okay, so it's been resting for about 10 minutes now and just look at that caramelization I was telling you about. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. And I am so ready to try it. So we are going to get us a nice slice. And I kept all that goodness in the pan because I did not want my meatloaf to dry out because I knew I was going to put it back into the oven. Get rid of that. Now I want this piece right here. Oh, I'm going to have to take them both out. No, I won't. Nice and firm, still juicy. Look at that meatloaf. Boy, if that don't look better than your grandma meatloaf, you telling the story. The leading people grandma meatloaf. <laughs> I didn't say lie, I said story. Look at that. How good does that look? Now, in this meatloaf, we have ground beef, we have ground pork, and we have Italian sausage with onions, bell pepper, shallots, garlic. What else? Onions, bell pepper, shallots, garlic, and some more goodness. Y'all gonna have to go back and watch if you're just not joining. But let's go ahead and take this taste. Mmm. Still gotta blow it, cause I know it's hot. Mmm. Now remember I was telling you about that glaze? That tangy, spicy, sweet combination just fits so well with that pork and that ground beef. Let's not forget that sausage. But this turned out Absolutely amazing. Mm. Mm. 
but just admire that. Look how uniform all of those vegetables are chopped up into that. Look how that glaze is just sitting on top of that. Just, just, mmm. Perfect. Yo, gang, whether you eating it with mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, a side salad, or even just putting it on bread, it is going to be absolutely amazing. Make sure that you try this. Listen, and I tell y'all this over and over again, it's not because I cooked it, but this is bussin' bussin'. Really, really bussin'. Hey, listen, make sure you check out www.yogang.com. Pick up a t-shirt or a gun bag patch. I really appreciate it. I thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I am going to enjoy this. With that being said, I'm sorry I gotta let you go. Y'all already know I love y'all for life. <laughs>